Are you serious? Are you serious, folks? Are you serious? The first ever one world religion <clears throat> temple is going to be built. And where is it going to be put? Some would say, well, certainly it's going to be here or there. Mecca? No. Jerusalem? No. New York City? No. Rome? No. London, England? No. Berlin. Berlin, Germany. The heart of neo-Nazism. The core. The place where birthed an ideology of the cleansing of the earth by the extermination of both Christians and Jews will be the location for the first ever one world religion temple. Chrislam. It's going to be called the House of One. But folks, you might say, well, that sounds kind of good. You know, maybe we could all come together. Under what name? I mean, folks, you have to understand. You're, you cannot serve more than one master. You can't have several gods. You have to call upon one Lord, one faith, one baptism by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. So you might say, who is that Savior? Jesus Christ. But that's not what they're preaching here. They're preaching a one world religion, and they're calling it the house of one. Let me remind you what the Bible said in Revelation 17, verses 5 and 6. And upon her forehead was written, uh, a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Folks, this one world religion is on its way. Now, a lot of people feel that Rick Warren birthed it. Uh, he was really the first charismatic, he was the first Protestant minister to start to embrace this one world religious concept. And, I mean, I just got done watching a 23-minute sermon of him preaching in front of thousands of Muslims, embracing them as his brothers and sisters. And, and trying to sell a message that we can all worship as one. No, we can't, Rick. No, we can't, Rick. With all due respect, Rick Warren, no, we can't. And now Pope Francis, who has taken it to another level by bringing in imams, Muslim imams and Muslim clerics and Jewish rabbis and Catholic cardinals to underneath the, into the Vatican and is pushing the exact same message of one we can all work together as one. No, we can't. No, we can't. And so, and the reason we can't is because you can't have more than one God. You can't call upon several different gods and say, but we're still all one. No, we're not. And so, let me tell you what the Chrislam movement's all about. It's about creating a one world religion so there can be a one world antichrist with a one world false prophet all worshiping in a one world religion, in a one world government, with a one world currency, and a system called the mark of the beast. Now this is all biblically based. It is prophecy, and it is coming. So they're going to build the first ever one world temple, a one world religious temple called the House of One. And uh, it will be built in uh, uh, Berlin, Germany. And just so you'll know, just so you will know, that in the Bible, Jesus talks about his faithful martyr, uh, Antipas, who was killed there in Greece on the altar of Zeus. Jesus said, I know where Satan's seat is, that same place where my faithful martyr was killed. He was roasted on in, in the belly of this thing, in the, on the altar of of this, uh, uh, which was actually the altar of Zeus, which is the seat of Satan. Now, 
during World War II, of course, Hitler had that altar moved from Athens, Greece, to Berlin, and it's still sitting in a museum in Berlin. So the seat of Satan that Jesus spoke about in the book of Revelation, when he calls it that, he said, I know where Satan, where Satan dwells. I know where he dwells. I know where his seat is. It's been moved to Berlin, folks. And now you're going to build the same city where the Holocaust was birthed. The same city that has the seat of Satan. That same city will now have the house of of one, the one world religion. I'm going to read it to you right here. In Revelation chapter 2, this is what Jesus said. Uh, he said in verse 13, so go to Revelation 2, 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. He was talking to the Christians there. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Well, when you go check history, you'll find out he was killed on the altar to Zeus. And so what Jesus was saying here is, that is the seat of Satan, where they killed. He tells you that's the seat of Satan, that altar to Zeus, where they killed my faithful martyr, Antipas. Well, that altar was taken apart and moved all the way to Berlin and is now sitting in a museum in Berlin. So the seat of Satan's in Berlin and now the house of one, Chrislam, the first temple of it to be built also in Berlin. I'm not saying the people of Berlin are evil. I'm just telling you that's where the seat is. Now, God specifically cannot stand this abomination that they are getting ready to build. Uh, Berlin thinks the making of religious history as Muslims, Jews, and Christians will join hands to build a place where they will call the house of one. It is being called and it will be a synagogue, a church, and a mosque all under one roof. They've been given, um, uh, of course, uh, this is very disturbing we know that Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust came out of Berlin, Germany. Uh, and I've just told you about the uh, seat of Satan, uh, Zeus's altar. I'm telling you, folks, there is something biblical going on here with the signs of the second coming of Christ. Are you serious? We're going to talk about this today in my live broadcast, The New World Order and the House of One. And, of course, what's going on with ISIS in Iraq and other biblical prophecies since this first blood moon. Unbelievable things have happened. We'll recap it today and talk about a whole lot more what's going on, including the snakes crawling out of the river Euphrates. Wow, something biblical is truly going on with the signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. If you're not saved, it is time to get right with God. It is time to give your life to Jesus Christ Come on, let's get on the winning side. Let's be a part of the family of God. We're going to win. We've got the victory already. Jesus won it for us at Calvary.